her up into a biochromatic integrator, which is a device that's a blending of alien science and old Atlantean science. We're here at the Source of Life Expo, and we're here with uh, Glenn. Yep. And uh, Glenn is going to share with us a little bit about the Philadelphia experiment and some other phenomena that have occurred. Uh, this is really incredible stuff. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're here on uh, Channel 17, and it's 11 p.m., and I'm glad you're watching the show. Well, in 1943, the government was conducting experiments which were originally envisioned by Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein in the 20s, which were to create a field, an electronic field, which would cause and go invisible. Now, what Nikola Tesla tried to tell the government, and they didn't listen to him, was they were making something invisible by making it leave the space-time continuum as we know it. And he wanted safeguards such as making a, a wristband that the sailors would wear, which would let them know where in the universe they were in reference to the ship. And because the government said, no, we don't want to spend the extra you know, $500 a, a wristband, Nikola Tesla backed out and then was later killed for his trouble, theoretically. How did they know that the wristband will help them or keep them in that location? Well, his, basically what the wristband was designed to do was to maintain the zero point of the person's consciousness on board the ship. See, if, when the ship left the space-time continuum, what would happen was the ship would become the universe for that person. And with the, then that's what the wristbands would allow the person to, to know. And without the wristbands, the person was just like floating in, in space. And what ended up happening was when the ship rematerialized, sailors materialized inside the decks and inside the bulkheads, half in and half out, you know, and, uh, you know, screaming horribly, needless to say. Um, also, the energetics of the situation caused some sailors to freeze and others to burn from the inside out. And uh, as a result of that, what ended up happening to the ship was it teleported to Norfolk, Virginia. But it was missing for several days. And that's where the Montauk Project comes in, which supposedly took place out of Montauk Point in an old abandoned uh, uh, Army Air Corps station, which was then given over to the Air Force, uh, which was also one of the sites where Nikola Tesla had uh, been digging tunnels for one of his free energy product uh, programs. Well, basically, the, the, at the Monti Project, they were conducting experiments in time, and they basically they weren't paying attention. And their big experiment took place on the same day at the same hour as the Philadelphia experiment had 40 years earlier. And so, what ended up happening was the uh, the ship was sucked into their space-time nexus and two men fell off and then the ship went back to was teleported to Norfolk, Virginia and one of those men was Al Bielik who's I believe doing a workshop at the moment who's, who's with us here today as well as Duncan Cameron and uh, the so time travel does exist oh absolutely and the government's been doing it since the 30s how would you get more information on that, on time travel in itself? And, and, and could individuals time travel without uh, a machine or a mechanical ap apparatus? Well, a, a gentleman out of California named Nick Nocerino got the entire file on the Philadelphia experiment out of the Freedom of Information Act. But the, the, see, the thing is, although all that information is basically supposedly available to the public, they change the codes by which it's filed every day. So unless you know the code that day, you can't get it, and it takes about 48 hours to get the codes for a file for the for the file. So what, ba what basically what happened was Nick Nocerino went to some of the far viewers that were trained by the CIA and said, "What's the file number for this?" He got it, walked across the street, punched it into the computer, got the file, walked out, and it included pictures of everybody, including Al Bielik and a variety of other people that had said they were involved but couldn't prove it because their minds had been wiped by you know various uh, government agencies. Well, they said he was the station manager. And basically what the project was about, it was about originally making, um, uh, exploiting the resources that they found buried under Long Island in the form of a pyramid that they found, which was one of the Atlantean temples. And they, they had to use some sort of a sonic key to open it up. 
And after they had opened it up, what they ended up finding, finding inside was the technology that later went into CDs, the technologies that went into surface barrier transistors, which are still uh, not allowed to be produced for anything other than military purposes in the United States, even though they were inv you know, supposedly invented in 71, uh, and a variety of other technologies. Do you know the location of this uh, pyramid? Well, it's supposed to be about a mile down uh, underneath Montauk Point. And uh, actually, um, I do know some people that have been going out there to do si uh, seismic uh, uh, son sonographic testing to see if they can detect tunnels under there. And every time they do, the sheriff immediately shows up and says, you folks can't do this. And they're like, well, it's public, public land. And they're like, well, you can't do this and throw them off. So, you know, I, I've always, I, I've been to Montauk Point, but I've never noticed any kind of military station or naval station there. The, when I was taken out there, I didn't drive personally, and it was about four years ago. But there is a, a, a base that's still out there. I mean, I've, I've been on it. I, I know that uh, Al or uh, Phil Gruber particularly could give you the address and tell you how to get there. You know, this is all... Tonight out there, they're, they're having a uh, panel discussion. Uh, yeah. Out there in Montauk? Are you guys going to be there? Well, Alan Duncan are. I got to stay and watch the booth. You know, somebody's got to make the money to pay for everything. <laughs> so, what's the end result with the Philadelphia experiment? What have we learned? What are what are our mistakes? Well, um, we've learned that we should have listened to Nikola Tesla, um, and uh, we've learned that. Uh, Maybe it might be time for the American public to start demanding that the uh, other 200 of Nikola Tesla's patents uh, be um, released again. He uh, developed a variety of different devices to generate electricity from the rotation of the Earth and the, and the magnetic fields of the Earth, um, which could eliminate nuclear power utterly and completely, as well as fossil fuel power generation, which was how the Monti Project was powered. Um, that's the only way they could generate the, 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 the bevel watts of energy that were necessary to open time portals. Um, we've, uh, we've learned that the, the government is willing to let uh, private companies, which see the Monti Project wasn't a government organization. With all this phenomena, because this is quite fascinating, I've always felt that time travel is possible because of the, the, the molecular structure of things and space and time and Einstein's uh, theory. What is the future when it involves time travel? What does it look like now? Well, I personally, I hope that there isn't much of a future because every time we go off into the past, we create alternate timelines, which stresses reality today. And one of the things that, that it seems to be causing the quote-unquote Earth changes is the fact that the Montauk Project created over 200 separate timelines which causes str uh, stress on the crust of the earth and it causes earthquakes and it causes volcanic eruptions it could cause the axial tilt of the earth and uh, in terms of uh, traveling into the future I don't necessarily know that it, it is it's really needed we've got too much to do in the day in the present moment to worry about the future or to be going off into the past because we've proven you can't change the past because every time the Montauk Project went off into the past to change things, all they did was create another timeline that ran parallel to our own and those people couldn't get back to us and we couldn't get to them. Although there does seem to be, uh, there were. Well, thank you, Glenn. You know, this is a really fascinating educational uh, situation with the Philadelphia experiment and the Montauk experiment. I'm really glad that you were able to share it with me and, and with the viewers. Uh